Hello everyone and welcome back to New Moon Acrylics. Welcome to my channel. My name is Rhonda. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, welcome back. So what we're going to be doing today, and I know it's a little bit of different background and stuff, but I wanted to do something different today. I need to put a backing on this painting right here. And because this is a commission piece and I need to deliver this tomorrow. So I need to put a backing on it. So I figured while I'm doing that, I might as well show you how I do my backings. So without further delay, let's get this thing covered. Alrighty, well, let's go create something new. Okay, hello everyone. So today we're going to be putting um, a backing on this painting here, this commission piece. Um, a lady, a nice little young lady um, had ordered this for her son's birthday. I had already done one for the son and she wanted one to match the one that he already had but in a different technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a backing on this one. So um, as you can tell I do not tape the back of my paintings when I paint them. And reason being is because I do put a covering on them. So what you're gonna need, and I tried using Mod Podge for a while, but uh, actually ran out. So I wanted to try something different, um, something a little more economical. Um, as I've said in previous videos, we're all about trying to make money with our paintings, not put a whole bunch into them. So um, anyway, I use glue all, the Elmer's glue all, the same Elmer's glue all that I made that last painting with in my um, last video. Multi-purpose, folks, and I get this on Amazon. So what I do, I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. What I do is I just take and I reuse, repurpose everything here. This is an old to-go cup. And I just put a little bit of glue in here. And if I don't use it all, I just cover it back up and it stays until the next time I need to use it. And then I'm gonna use a sponge brush to apply the glue to the back of the painting. You can also use your hands if you want to with gloves, or you can use a paintbrush, whatever you choose to put it on. I like these better. And you're also going to need a pretty sharp um, utility knife or an exacto knife or something, but you're going to want to make sure that it's sharp. So I'll put that over here. So I also have an old kitchen towel to put down on my table to protect the front of the canvas, the painting, because I use this table for a lot of stuff. I do have a covering on it, but instead of changing it out every time, I just put the towel on there. So I'm going to flip the painting over, and the first thing you want to do is make sure that there aren't any um, like big drips or anything that came on the side that is going to interrupt your flow. And if there is, like there's a little drip right here, so I'm just going to take that off. And that's actually just a little drip from the varnish. So everything else looks pretty smooth and we're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna take my glue. Wait, back up a second before I do that. I need to measure out my paper here. And I forgot my scissors, hang on one second. Let me get my scissors. Oh, goodness. Okay. Alrighty. Sorry, folks. Alright. What I'm going to do first is cut this piece off right here. Okay, and I save this for a smaller painting. 
And by the way, the paper that I use to cover the back of my painting is craft paper. This craft paper I get at Dollar Tree and used to be a dollar a roll, but because Dollar Tree went up in the prices, it's $1.25 now. But I can cover a lot of paintings with this roll. It's a 30 inch by 13 foot. And this is the roll that I get. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just measure out how much I'm gonna need of the paper so I have it ready. If I can get it to unroll, there we go. You wanna leave a little bit on all sides. So I'm gonna put it right about there. And I'm gonna cut. Right like that. And then I'm also gonna trim down here because I don't need all this paper down here. Okay. And again, save this little piece because you never know. I actually have a shelf over here with a bunch of um, extra pieces for smaller paintings. So I'm gonna take this and just move it to the side like that. And I leave it laying to the side just like this so I know when I go to put it on, that's how it's gonna lay across the canvas. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my glue and open this. All right, and all you're gonna do is dab that in there, and then you're just gonna brush it on. Make sure you get the corners really well, and you wanna get down the edges. Now you wanna put down a decent amount You don't want to glop it on, but you want to make sure that you have enough to hold the paper on. Make sure you get your corners well. And after I'm done brushing one side, I always run my finger like this down the very edge to make sure that there's not a bunch of drips going down the side, because you don't want that, especially on a gallery wrapped canvas. You want your sides to look pretty. Now, because there are staples in the backs of the canvas, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get where the staples are as well. And just run this down this way along the staples and it'll fill them in pretty nicely. And it's not gonna matter if you get some glue drips down on the inside that's not gonna hurt anything. And this is not very time consuming either. And like I said, it's very inexpensive. That one gallon of glue all will go a long way. It'll make your paintings and back them, how's that? Okay, one more side to go. Make sure you get your corners. Like so. Just give it one little more rundown. Okay, cover that up. And with your brush, you can either rinse it out or stick it in a baggie. I'm gonna rinse mine out in a minute. Okay, so now the paper, once you get your glue on, you lay your paper on the, side, on the back. You press down the top to get it to stay. 
And then what I do is as I'm, as I'm going down the sides, I just press right here on the edge and it not only helps to get the paper to stay, but when it dries, it actually helps the paper to be tight on the back. Turn it this way. Whoops. It's all right if it tears, because that's coming off. Just rub it down the side like this. And then what I like to do is tip it back over this way and just press down on the edges to make sure that everything is gonna be connected. And just make sure that you press on the edge and not um, where the canvas is not supported by the frame. And there you go. Now all you have to do is wait for it to dry. So I'm gonna put this video on pause and then I'll be back in a few minutes to trim the back. Alrighty, so I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I'm back. It has been probably about maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, I rinsed out my brush and as you can see, it is ready to use again. So that's that. So now we're going to trim the paper, the excess off of the edge of the canvas. I'm gonna try to do this so you, so you can see. Now let me move the camera up a little bit. There you go. Okay, so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna take your um, utility knife or your X-Acto knife, whatever you're using, and what you wanna do is get it started. So you're gonna start right about up here, just poke it through and pull right along the top like that. Then you're going to take the knife, put it right where you started, right there, and just run it along the edge. Just like so. Okay, now let's flip it over, do the next side, put the knife in the top, swing it over, and I know, let me move it up a little bit more because it's a tall canvas. Okay, and then just go right along the top. Like that. And do the same thing on all four sides. You don't want to start from back here because it's easier if you get yourself a, a starting point to go across the whole thing. So you get yourself a little starting point and then just go right along the edge. And just be careful to not cut the canvas. You want to hold the knife at an angle so that you don't cut your canvas. Let me see if I can get this in just a little bit closer for you. So you're gonna hold your knife kind of like that at an angle. You don't wanna hold it like this because you chance cutting your canvas. So you're gonna hold it at an angle and then you're just gonna bring it forward a little bit and then just trim. I'm gonna bring this back towards me because my arms are not that long so I can finish off the trim. And there we go. So now our back, let me bring you back down. There we go. Okay, so now our back is all covered. 
And what you do from here on out is your own personal preference. What I do is, um, hang on one second, I need to get my little pen. Which I can't find. There it is. Okay. So I just use a regular um, marker pen and I'll write up here and just be careful not to put, now as you can see, the paper's tight, okay? Reasons I put backings on is because a lot of places have spiders and other critters and when you hang your painting on the wall and it's flush up against the wall, even with bumpers on it, critters will get in there make a web, make a mess on the back of the canvas, so I cover it. Some people will put vent holes in their canvas. I don't do that because that's just defeating the purpose. If you do your research, you'll find that this um, craft paper is porous and it will allow the canvas to breathe so you don't have to worry about mold or anything getting into the back. Okay, so what I do is I just carefully write on here. And what I do is I put the painting name and the name of his first painting was Serenity. So this is gonna be Serenity too. Um, and then I also put the date kind of where in June. So, um, I'm gonna put June 2022. And then I'll also put the number of the painting. I'm not sure, I have to look at my records to see what the number is, but I put the number in up there too. So I, if they like the painting and they want a replica and I'll just ask them what was the number of the painting and they can tell me what it is. And then I get these, I print these myself and they're from, I have, uh, you can create an account with avery.com. I'm gonna try to remember to put all this stuff down at the in the descriptions. I know I keep forgetting to do so, but I have an account with Avery and um, it's a free thing. You go on there and you can design your own stuff. And then I pick up these labels and you can get any kind of labels you want. I get these at Walmart, or you can also order them from Avery themselves. And then I just print them out and I'm good to go. Saving money. Don't need to have anybody printing my stuff for me because I can do it pretty well on my own. Then I just sign on the bottom. And then this painting because it is going to someone the mom wanted a special special okay get the words right special message to her son i'm not going to show it to you um but i have it on here i printed it out and laminated it and i'm gonna attach it to the back of the canvas right there for her so there's a special message and then i always add a little extras this is what keeps your customers coming back. I add the little extras. These are little rubber bumpers that you can get on Amazon. They're little rubber feet. And I'm going to put the link to that also in the description. And these help to keep the canvas off of the wall just a little bit. So you just put one in each corner. If it's a really long canvas, or a really large one, you can put more. When I have canvases this side, I put one on each corner. And I don't put them in the middle because when the folks are hanging this painting, you know that they're gonna put whatever they're hanging it with probably in the middle. So you don't wanna put a bumper in their way. And then I also attach I also get these from Amazon. These are little sawtooth hangers. See, they're little sawtooth hangers. 
and they have, um, I hope you can see that good enough, right there is a point, so they don't need to put screws in these. I hate the little sawtooth hangers that have screws in them because you can never get them little screws. You, they, you drop the little screws. and So what I do is I just put a couple of these in a little baggie, like so. And then I just attach it with my stapler to the back of the canvas. And it's not hurting the canvas at all, like that. And then she's good to go. All I got left to do is put this little um, note up here for the mom, put the date on, put the painting number on here, and this painting is ready to go. So all of this that I just did probably cost, it was a dollar for the paper for a whole roll, and that roll will do approximately like 15 paintings or more, depending on the size. Um, like I said, it, the roll is, uh, 30 inches by 13 feet. So that's a lot of coverage for the backs of your paintings. And that's, like I said, again, it was only $1.25. <clears throat> the Elmer's glue wall to attach the paper to the back, again, on Amazon. And I'm, I'm gonna really, really try this time, folks, to put everything down in the descriptions, put the links to everything. Um, my little stickers here, it's a free account on Amazon, I mean on Avery, and I want to say I pay about $12 for a package of these stickers, and I don't think I have a package in here. They're in my other room, but anyway, so these, all these little extras um, I think I paid maybe $7 or something for these, and it wasn't much for the rubber bumpers. And all these little extras that you put on the paintings, that's, you know, it makes the customer feel special. And that's going to make them want to come back for more. All these little details, all these little personal touches. I don't use stamps on my paintings because, again, it's a little personal touch when you actually put your handwriting on the back of the painting. They know it's legit, they know it's you, and it's personal. So anyway, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and hit that little notification bell so that you can see when I'm gonna be putting up more um, videos. I do regular uploads every Tuesday and Thursday, and I will be doing um, in-between videos. This one here, this video will be an in-between. So I hope you like the video, folks. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And until next time, let's keep creating something new. All right, everybody. Stay blessed. Bye.